Hi guys and welcome to Sunderland vs Oxford match preview. So Sunderland do take on Oxford at the stadium at tomorrow as I am recording this. It is a 3pm kickoff, and it is one of our games in hand. Um, I think there's only us and I think Aki Stanley are playing tomorrow as well. Uh, so it gives us a really good opportunity, potentially anyway. Of course Oxford are a good side but we will get into that. But it gives us a really, really good opportunity now to kind of put the pressure back on the top three. Because with a victory tomorrow, it sees us level on points with uh, Rotherham. Uh, Wigan and Wickham as well, who are all joint top. They're on 38 points. We're on 35, of course. Um, so it's a really, really good opportunity for us. I'd rather have points on the board than having all these games in hand. It's all well and good saying, you know, oh, we'll have a couple of games in hand. If we win them, then we might go top or we could do this. I'd rather have points on the board. So it's a really, really good opportunity tomorrow. But as I say, Oxford is not going to be an easy task. It really isn't. I don't think they haven't lost, oh, sorry, they haven't lost a game since mid-October. They took on uh, Plymouth. Uh, they welcome Plymouth at home, um, and they struggled 3-1 at the time. Plymouth were absolutely flying, so that isn't a, a shock result uh, by any stretch. Of course, in recent weeks, or the last couple of weeks, I think Plymouth have fell away a little bit. But generally, Plymouth have absolutely blown the league away from the start of the season. And they've only fell off a little bit over the last couple of weeks, as I say. But Oxford, in terms of the way that we've played against them, they've always been the sort of or around the top six, generally. Uh, last season, we did the double over them, but before that, you know, we've always had difficult tests and difficult games against them. They play the ball on the ground generally uh, and they are a good side. They are a very good side. They have threats of their own and you know they've been winning games recently since mid-October so it's going to be hard regardless. Um, it's usually quick high press football from them and we need to be able to deal with that particularly with our injuries. Um, you know particularly you know, I don't say wing back it depends what system we play but a full back you know, we don't have any full-backs. Everything's makeshifting. You'll see this in my preferred starting eleven. I've got a couple of systems that we could maybe try. Maybe one with three at the back, one with four at the back. But either way, it's it's a makeshift lineup, regardless. And it is very, very worrying. But hopefully we have enough quality. And at the stage of light as well, generally, you know, we're very, very good at stage of light. Maybe not in terms of performance, but a lot of the time we somehow, this season anyway, we've managed to get away with, with results. Um, so hopefully that is the case and uh, the backing of the crowd can push him along and we maybe get away with three points. But we'll go into my preferred 11 for this game. So firstly, if we were going to go into a 4-2-3-1 or even a 4-4-2, these are the players that I would go with. So we have Hoffman in goal, Doyle at left-back, which isn't great. I do really prefer him at, at centre-back, but he did okay against Cambridge when he was uh, forced into that position. You've got Flanagan and right in the middle with Gooch at right-back, who, to be fair... He was absolutely fantastic against Cambridge. It, it, at times when it was a four at the back, he tucked in at right back and he was very, very good. And when he was right wing back, he was even better. So in this system, this is who I would play there. I know you could argue why you've done that. Why isn't Winchester there? He's generally been a lot. He's been really good this season there. But for me, Dan Neal and Winchester, they are our best central midfielders. And whilst you've got the likes of Evans, who's out, who for some reason, Lou Johnson kept on using, even though he's absolutely bloody useless. And you've got O'Neill, who kept getting in there ahead of Winchester, and Winchester sitting at right back. I feel like it's just so wasted. It gives us such a good opportunity. And if you did see him against Cambridge, particularly the first half, when we had the wind in our favour, and the wind just wasn't absolutely battering us in the second he literally channeled his inner league catamol. He tucked his shirt in and everything, and he was absolutely battering those Cambridge players. All fair challenges like, but it was all just pure aggression. And you can see that you know, over the last sort of month or two, he has been an absolute leader from right back. He's constantly screaming and shouting, but he's not a max power sort of player who simply screams and shouts and then doesn't back it up with actions on the pitch of his own. He actually goes and delivers performances and then screams and shouts, and he's got a really high standard. So to have that alongside Dan Neal in the middle, I think that's ideal. Maybe it leaves us a little bit short on the full-back position, but that's the headache that we've got at the minute because we don't have any freaking full-backs. So I've done Neil and Winchester there. Now, up top, like I say, there could easily be a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-3-1. We could go for Broadhead and Stuart up top, then have Pritchard out wide on the left and Embleton on the right, but for me, I feel like that just lacks the pace that I think we need. You could argue Diaku because he has somewhat, you know, a little bit of pace, but for me, he just hasn't performed at all since we've signed him. He has not impressed me. The one game where he was all right is when he come on uh, against Crew, um, and obviously he scored the goal, but other than that, he just hasn't impressed me at all. And against a bit of a physical side, he just gets battered. He gets absolutely battered. It didn't stand out amongst you know, the olden players. You would never know that this lad is supposed to be, you know, a former Bayern Munich player, um, and, you know, of course, you need to give him time to bed in and that, but all I can do is go off what I've seen, and he's been really, really poor. So you might, again, argue that there isn't enough pace there, but we need to work with what we've got. And I think we've got enough technical ability there to try and feed the likes of Broadhead and Stewart in behind there. So I think that is the, probably the system I would go with. Or, if we are going to go for a three at the back, I would go 
for this system. Of course, right at the back there, you have Doyle, Wright, Flanagan. Now, of course, you have Gooch there at right wing back. You have Broadhead, which I know it's a bit daft there. I don't really... I wouldn't fancy playing Broadhead there, personally, but the only reason I have chucked him there is purely for the pace. I mean, Pritchard is actually deceivingly quick, but, you know, it is quite short. He isn't the strongest. Um, but I suppose you could put Pritchard there, really. But I, literally, I'm just thinking of pace down the wings to help out Doyle on that left-hand side. But still, same case with Dan Neal and Winchester in the middle with uh, Embo in behind Stewart. I suppose, like I say, you could swap, swap uh, Pritchard with Broadhead. But it's still the same group. It's still the same 11 players. Either way, I would be quite happy with that. I don't really see many other options... No doubt we're going to see someone like O'Brien in tomorrow or Diaku, which I just I don't think either of them really they don't um, or they don't warrant a place in the side. But you know what Lee Johnson's like; he sticks with what he likes. But those would be my uh, my systems and my preferred starting 11s. Now, as usual, of course, let me know what you think about those starting 11s and what you would do if you were in charge in terms of what starting lineup you would do, what system you would do. It's always interesting. I read all the comments anyway. It's always really interesting to see you. Sorry, to see your guys' opinions in the comments down below. Now, in terms of a score prediction, uh, it's a difficult one. It depends what Sunderland turns up, doesn't it? And to be fair, with our injuries at the minute, it's uh, it's difficult because if Oxford are firing and they're going down the wings, we don't have any proper full-backs, we could be in a lot of trouble. So, I mean, if we did put Winchester at right-back, which is, again, I keep saying it, it's criminal, it is, but if we did uh, I put him at right-back, and of course we have Doyle, who isn't naturally left-back, but he's a defender, we'd probably be a little bit more assured but uh, at the same time, I don't want to see Winchester there, so we might be able to hold on to something. Don't know what I'm talking about in a minute. But uh, I'm just rambling. This is what I do. I don't uh, sort of pre-write anything when I do these uh, previews or reviews. I just ramble and see what happens. Um, but yeah, so if we did have Winchester at right back and uh, Doyle at left back, then maybe I'd probably be a little bit more confident in saying that we might be able to keep a clean sheet or at least keep them at bay uh, somewhat. But if you put Goops there on the right-hand side, you know, you've got Doyle and left as well, or depending on the system they use, then I think we will concede. Um, but, of course, with the system with Winchester in the middle, I feel like that gives us a better opportunity to move forward and attack. So I think it could we could see quite a few goals in this game. And I hope that is the case, you know, for us anyway. But I'm going to go for a Sunderland 3-2 win, uh, which is a big one. Uh, and it's uh, me putting my neck out on the line there. I don't know where I'm getting this confidence from. But 3-2, um, I'm going to go for Sunderland. Um, I think we will largely get battered, but we will somehow get three goals. Call me crazy, but I'm an optimist. So uh, I'm going to go for a 3-2 Sunderland win. I'm going to go for a Ross Stewart with one, and uh, I'm going to go with Broadhead with a double. Now, I am going to the game tomorrow, so again, I do apologise. There will be no review to this game because I'm going up to Sunderland first thing in the morning, and uh, I'm staying over as well, so I won't be back till late Sunday. And at that point, I'll, I'll be shattered and probably very hungover so uh <laughs> so if you guys do see me don't hesitate to say hi like i say all the time i would love meeting you guys it's always amazing but uh, there we go that is my preview to this game let me know what in the comments what you think is going to happen tomorrow at the stage like what score is it going to be but that'll be it from me if you've enjoyed hit the like button for me it'd be massively massively appreciated and subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the sarnia army but for now you take care and stay jammed <laughs>